Hey, you like going fast? Well, that's what this video is about. I'm just going to be going over general mobility and movement. Now, you don't need to know any of this to play Dragon's Dogma 2. All the stuff I'm going to show you is really only useful for three things. Getting to Seeker's Tokens, Style Points, and going fast. So I'm going to be very succinct with everything I know, starting with some very obvious stuff like if you sheath your weapon, you run faster. Wow. And next is the mage spell High Celerity, which gives you a big boost to your running speed. Now if you don't want to play as mage, you can hire a pawn with this, and if you use the help command, they'll cast it. Pretty handy. And next is Encumbrance. It's pretty obvious. The lighter you're carrying, the faster you'll move. Now in Dragon's Dogma 1, there was an augment called Leg Strength, which renders you one rank lighter in mobility. What this means is that if you were at light, you would move as though you were in very light. But if you were in very light, the lightest class, you would actually move at very, very light with this augment equipped. There was a hidden tier of mobility. In Dragon's Dogma 2, Morfarer has dynamism, which works exactly the same way, but from my testing, there is no hidden weight class. Thief and Archer have unique vaulting animations. An Archer's avidity augment grants a 10 to 15% faster vaulting speed. And another thing imported from Dragon's Dogma 1 is your character's height affects your running speed. Left is max height, middle is 185 centimeters, and right is the shortest height. And if a move has any lunge to it, height will affect the distance. Now size also affects your natural stamina regeneration. Top is shortest height, middle is normal height, and bottom is the tallest. But if you noticed, middle and the tallest have very similar stamina regeneration. Now this confused me a little bit, so I did a little bit more testing. So the test I did was I made my character the same height, but I changed his weight. In the first one, I moved all the sliders to the left to make him as light as possible, and in the second one, I made him as heavy as possible. So with the same height, top is light, bottom is heavy, and as you can see, your weight is what affects your stamina regeneration. Thief in general is the fastest vocation in Dragon's Dogma 2. Using Cutting Wind followed by a normal attack into a dash normal attack is probably the fastest and most stamina efficient way of traveling through Dragon's Dogma 2. But when it comes to traveling downhill, Warrior is the fastest class. Ravenous Lunge has a unique property to it. It has momentum. What this means is that if you go downhill, the steeper the slope, the more speed you'll have. So yeah, I mainly play Warrior, and I always have Ravenous Lunge on me. Using this skill when going downstairs makes you at mock speed. It's pretty great. Now, using Ravenous Lunge actually takes a bit of skill, because if you hit a wall, it takes like 10 seconds to recover. And one place I love using it is in back booty, no, back shots, what's it called again? Back batal, that's it. This is a little downhill area before you go to the beach. There's a lot of tight turns, you go really fast. And if you reach the bottom without crashing into a wall, well, you mastered ravenous lunge. Now this is something I'm just going to call the wiggle lunge. If you move left and right while going uphill, you can gain a little bit of momentum. How this works is, well, honestly, I don't know. Just abusing the geometry and the weird physics of this game. Now we gotta go fast. Now we could go down this cliff like a normal person, or we could just jump off of it. You gotta make sure you have a wake stone on you though. But yeah, this is actually something I do when I just don't feel like climbing down a cliff. Now real quick, I'm gonna talk about how fairy stones work. As you can see, I'm in Trevo Mine, and I might position myself right under a gigantic hole in the ceiling, showing the open sky. And as you can see, the fairy stone worked. But why? Because how fairy stones actually work is that it depends on if you have open sky above you or not. So if you have an umbrella, a ceiling, or a piece of cloth blocking your way, the fairy stone won't work. But if there's a giant hole in the ceiling, you can use a fairy stone, whether it's inside a dungeon or inside the city. Alright, so for the next half of this video, I'm going to be using this little area as my playground, just east of the checkpoint rest town. I'm using this area because this broken bridge is a lot of fun to try to cross. And as you can see, the mage and the sorcerers levitate is one of the best ways to traverse the world. It's incredible for crossing long gaps, getting to places you're not supposed to, and getting to seekers tokens. It's honestly an incredible tool. It doesn't require any augments, doesn't require any combination of skills, you just need a staff. Now it's not the best when it comes to height, but I'll show you what is in a quick second.
but now I switched over to the Thief vocation and into something more comfortable. I'm going to show you Thief's mobility options, but it requires a specific combination of skills. What you'll need is Powder Charge, Concussion Step, and Skull Splitter. And if you use them together in the right order, you get something like this. Pretty stylish. I was going to take care of this ogre real quick so I don't get drop kicked from the back. Huh. He's literally me. We can't have that. Man, this game is wild. Alright, back to movement. So once again for Thief, it's pretty simple. Let down a powder charge, jump, concussion step, activate the powder charge to cancel the step, and maintain momentum, and then do skull splitter. Thief just has a lot of gravity defying skills. I want to do it one more time in slow motion. Uh, you can look at the bottom right for inputs. You can also use this to get some incredible height. Just do concussion step and powder charge going straight up. Now Thief also has a wall jump, but it's a little finicky. And by finicky, I mean it'll send you to space sometimes. Well, the wall jump option is still there, but it's not as good as the concussion step powder charge. Well, I saved the best for last, it's the Devil May Cry class. Well, to get the best out of Mystic Spear Hands mobility, you only need three things. Now, you'll need the skill of Dragon's Festy, Dragon's Foin, and the upgraded Bolt Core skill. And Mystic Spear Hands skills are in Old English. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just calling it Festy, Stinger, and Bolt, just to make things easier. Now, one important thing to know to get the most out of the Mystic Spear Hand mobility is the Festy Bolt Cancel. The hardest part is knowing the timing. First, you have to charge up a bolt, and the moment you reach the peak of the Festy Jump, you let go of the bolt. Now, you want to delay the bolt a little bit, because if you do it too early, then it won't work. Now, the hardest part was the bolt cancel, but once you get the timing down for that, just mash stinger and you're good to go. Or so you'd think. But there's actually a little bit more execution to it. Now, when you're in the air, bolt has a little bit of pushback. So if you try to jump across the bridge normally, bolt will push you back, preventing you from having enough distance to cross the bridge. So to fix this, when we release bolt, we hold back, shooting backwards and launching ourselves forward. Then we hold forward and do stinger. Now there's a more advanced version of Festi Cancel, which is doing two Festi Cancels in one combo. Now how it works is exactly the same as a normal Festi Cancel, but the moment you let go of Bolt, you immediately hold it down again to charge another Bolt. And if you time it right, by the time you do the second Festi after the Stinger, you should be able to cancel into the second Bolt that just charged a moment before. Well, the execution is definitely harder. So I'll show a slow motion clip real quick, so you can see the inputs. Oh, and at the end of this clip, I hold back to shoot the bolt backwards, so I don't launch myself away from the wall, and then I just hold forward to climb onto the wall. I like Mystic Spear Hand a lot, it's a very stylish vocation. Now one small problem is that you can only do one stinger per combo. Now you can do a third festi, but it's only really good for styling on enemies. You can't charge a third bolt in time to do a third cancel, sadly. And that's all the movement tech I know. Use it. Don't use it, it doesn't matter. Okay, bye.